Hey guys, Lindsay here, Marissa, and we are going to talk about a little bit about our experiences when we had no power for what, four days? Lessons we learned. Lesson one is about light. When you don't have electricity, you need light. And when the storm first blew through, I, in my ever amazing wisdom, whipped out all of my candles and lit up every room in the house. Even though normally I don't light up any room in the house. So I, I went into crisis mode. It wasn't a good thing. So I, I followed Anyways. her around and blew out the candles after she left the room. But we jerry-rigged this because I learned about it on Pinterest. This is a gallon jug of water and on it is our camping headlight. You know, Let's just see. standard one that you can wear. These are very helpful in general. When you're camping. Wow, I look very special. I look like a hippie. Well, it diffuses the light, so it's basically, it's as, a, as opposed to just like a pinpoint of light that you get from an actual like light source, like a flashlight or a headlamp like this. Um, you can turn it on and it acts like a light. This is also excellent for camping because you can fill up your water with clean, fresh water for the evening. You can use it and then drink out of it. And, and it was very, very nice. And if you have kids, which our neighbors do, you um, don't have to worry about candles falling over. Yeah. Or kids and fire. And or dogs sort of and dogs. tails. The other thing about lights is if you are preparing, if you're some sort of preparatorian or something. Um, We're not preppers. Really. We are not preppers. <laughs> so this is Lindsay's keychain because she's kind of a prepper. I'm not going to lie. It has a lot of things on here like... This is the very tiniest um, lighter you could ever imagine. She also has a little knife, which actually does come in handy, well, even though I thought it was weird. But the most important thing, getting back to light, is um, this little light here. A lot of people have big giant flashlights or flashlights that you have to crank or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, But this one is much more effective. It's very small. You can keep it on a keychain or you can keep it in like your emergency box. And it has a very, very, very bright light. Turn it on. See? It's an extremely bright light and it works a lot better than any other flashlight that we have seen neighbors using walking mm -hmm. in the neighborhood. It has a very focused um, beam. It has a lot, it outputs a lot of lumens for its size. You know, a lot of um, lumens. Yeah. So, this is kind of like a nice um, go between. I, I, yeah. You can throw it in your pocket, you can throw it in a bag, and it doesn't take up too much space. Right. The other thing is that um, even though we don't have TV and we don't watch TV, sometimes the silence can be mind-numbing. We purchased a radio. We're not trying to like uh, tell anyone to buy this particular radio, but this is not a high-class radio by any means. Um, but Lindsay purchased it for, you know, just weather purposes mm -hmm. and um, so that we have some connection. And this one is nice. It's normally plugged in when we didn't have electricity. It takes... Okay. Four double A. It takes four double A batteries, but the four double A batteries we had in here last us an extremely long time. I had the radio on Friday night, I had it on Saturday night, I had it on Sunday during the day, and I had it on Monday. And also when we camped out, our neighbors had the radio on uh, playing music. I don't know, I don't think they know what that means. Camped out. Oh, well, because we don't have electricity and our neighbors have children and they like to be entertained, we decided that we would do a camp out in the backyard. This is a very good radio to have if you want something that's small and lightweight and you can use in your life and then also for emergencies. Mm -hmm. We did learn a lot of things being without electricity, even though we're very prepared people. Like, for instance, Lindsay has to make a solar panel so we can power our refrigerator. Uh, because generators are really loud and um, kind of unnecessary obnoxious. and they need gas and if by chance we don't have you know gas or access to gas that kind of sucks so yeah that's one thing we need to do but otherwise we were fairly prepared mm -hmm. but the other thing that was really great about not having electricity is the was that we hung out with our yeah. neighbors every single day but what was, it's not just interacting more it's like they were out and about mm -hmm. all of the time, and we had conversations with them. Neighbors that we don't see very often because yeah. they're working all day or uh, very busy with their own life. And things just tend to slow down completely. Mm -hmm. People tend to have conversations. They want to hang out. Um, we want to have meals together. And that was just a really awesome experience. Well, the other thing that's nice to have, keep this in mind if you're buying a house, 
We had a gas stove, so the gas was on, so we could cook on the stove. Mm -hmm. We don't eat a ton from the refrigerator, but it's like the milk. We could have eaten the milk. Well, not after. We could have done better with our food. We could have. We were lazy about it. What happens is you're like, we're lazy about it, and then you are like so preoccupied with like the trees that are like sticking out of people's houses that you forget to eat. But those are the things that we learn. Yeah. Um, we'll probably talk to you again about preparedness because we are kind of interested in it. I don't know, but we're talking us. about prepared in like the concept of a slow decline in our economy. Right. So like if we're talking about like slowly not being able to use oil or slowly transitioning our lifestyle to something different, that's what we're talking about. Uh oh. I think the children are outside. I think the kids are coming. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. There's our dog.